Hey folks, dude here. Come to you, come to you, come to you, come to you again. Iteration of, um, could this maybe be an episode of Knife Blog? I got pain on my finger. That, that's the project that's under there. And it's associated with something else that's going to be an adjunct to, eh, it's not going to be this, but, um, let, let's just fire this thing up here. So basically got my package, obviously the, uh, the shipping termites have gotten to it yet again. And I probably need to open the package. So, uh, package needs to get opened. So, uh, what are we going to use to open it? Um, uh, well, I'm just probably going to use this, which is the reason for that thing being under the, uh, the napkin in front of you. It's, it's, okay. Yes, it's another one of the blackjack, infamous blackjack. Oh, man. Mm, I, I truly do have an affection, an affliction, and an affection for these things. This would be the blackjack panga. There's already, you know, a, a, you know, a knife blog video about that. You guys could find that at your leisure. What the hell? I'll put the link down in the uh, channel description or video, video description down below. All right, so anyway, let's just fire this thing up here and see what we got. So, uh how to do this with a 16-inch long panga. Uh, okay, I think you're probably just going to see this. Yeah, that, that's probably all you're... That's all you're going to see is me basically just, like, you know, barely snipping the package here and trying not to, like, you know, run myself through. So let me just put that off to the side before accidents happen. All right, so anyway, let me pop this sucker and open here. And... Low, but to my wondering eyes should appear, but I was terrorizing eBay. Oh, man, this autofocus is annoying as all get out. All right, so I was terrorizing eBay, and I already have one of these. And uh, it's a rarefied critter. It's actually very, very hard to source. Um, already did a video for something, you know, semi-associated with it. This, of course, being just, you know, my standard old regular utility knife. This thing's been floating around for forever, for, for forever. And uh, I really, really want to turn off the autofocus. This thing is just being annoying. Stop that. Okay? So, all right. Uh, looking at this thing as it is, it is a wrap package using some... Non I think it's a, it's basically like a, a, a bag. Anyway, so what dude did was he wrapped up one of these. Oh, are you guys kind of getting a little bit, am, you know, ambivalent here? Or are you, or are you like, going... Dude, what the heck did you find? Well, I, let's just say it was not cheap. And I do actually have one of these. Now I got two of these. That's right. It is a Spyderco pre-diver. This one is missing the shackle. Uh, obviously, it is missing the front area. Now, you can look at these and see that there's actually two different thicknesses of the scales. Now, there's a reason why there's two different thicknesses of the scales. It's because one of these, and you can see, well, uh, they haven't been very nicely, you know, acted upon. But if you could look at this thing for what it was previously, there was a French pattern clip that came out. It was like the sheet metal thing basically came out, and there was another piece of sheet metal that came out. And it pretty much was a hook, and you could clip it on things and what have you. And it really just didn't work very good. It, it was really just... A very, very badly designed, ill, ill proportioned, and uh, it, it was just not good. Okay, so looking at this thing as it sits, uh, there is no uh, production number on it. Read like you know, like a three-digit number, because there is only a thousand of these that have been made. So you know, you can actually see this one's got a little bit of rust on board. You know, it does have some wear on board. It is a used piece. Obviously, it does have some little bites, dings, you know, boogers, what have you. But it's still, the, 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 the serrations on this thing are still very, very sharp. I mean, yeah, I could possibly touch it up and whatnot. But this, that's a collectible piece, man. You, you really don't want to start bodgering, you know, and hacking and chopping and carrying on whatnot. All right, so anyway, what, what's the story behind these things? Sal Glesser, the guy that basically has Spyderco, and he's had Spyderco since, you know, it's fruition because he's the owner. So he's a diver, and he wanted to have a tool that was easy to utilize. So they came up with this. This was the pre-diver. Then what they came up with next was the, you know, the diver probe, which was the pry bar with basically kind of like one of these blades on the end where it has, you know, a line cutter on board and it's a serrated edge. Uh, now, also, the pre-diver 
doesn't have something that the diver probe does have. The diver probe actually has a drilled hole on the back of the blade with a lanyard. So if you're having a hard time trying to open it with, you know, really, really thick diving gloves, you could just pull on the lanyard and you would pop the blade open. And that was, you know, one of those things you could do. Seeing as how this one has a very, and I do mean very substantial thumb hole. I mean, th this, this is absolutely blanking huge compared to most of the other Spyderco knives, which in my collection, I think the hole is actually a full centimeter, if not 12 millimeters. It's actually very, very large. So basically, it is a massive... I mean, it, it's big enough to stick your pinky through, okay? It's an absolutely massive opening hole on this thing. Uh, also, comprising the earlier style of construction of their quote-unquote dive knives, you had a hole here to allow things to dry out. Also, this could also be seen as a shackle wrench. Uh, you do have graduated... Uh, rules on board i believe that's inch and centimeter it's kind of really hard to see because you know the finish has been so just you know bashed up over the years and uh it, it's kind of one of these things where it either stands out or it doesn't stand out to the human eyeball it's kind of there but it's a really really light graduation yeah you guys can kind of probably see it now but it is centimeters and inches on the other side you have a one-way carry only belt clip there is a through hole, which is lined. Uh, obviously, the construction on this, and this autofocus is getting on my nerves. Okay, the uh, the construction on this is going to be just riveted construction, where they basically put one scale on top of the other scale, have a piece of steel rod going through, and boom. You know, and then they basically probably have a conical hole where, you know, pretty much it's like, you have like a conical hole where you put the metal in and you drive it in and you kind of almost like rivet it shut. So, and then you obviously then polish it down because you can see like this one is sub flush. So maybe it was a case of where they drove it, they drove it in and then they polished it. So looking at this thing as it is, there is one, two, three, four of these blind rivets that have been driven in and banged and smushed and, you know, made this thing into the construction of what it is. So obviously it is a lock blade and you do obviously have a very substantial step in there so that is your lock which then goes and it, it it the walk and talk on this thing still is very i mean it, it's it's like dead smooth i mean the action on this thing is just absolutely just like butter so this was back in the day when you know spider co was making stuff primarily in japan and this one if you look at it it does say seki japan so s-e-k-i japan so Seki, you know, the guys over in the uh, the Seki Knife Works read like all the guys were making all the survival knives and all the cool stuff that, you know, it was the the 40, well, 440 steel that was like, you know, the bread and butter of those guys. Then they transitioned to Gen 1, then they transitioned to AUS 6, then AUS 8. And then, of course, there was all the, you know, the crucible particle stuff and, you know, the really, really hardcore, you know, just, you know, witch's brew steels that were absolutely ridiculous. Uh it is kind of funny on this thing, and I've seen this on every single one. The belt clip does not line up very well with the end of the scale. It, it, it just doesn't. I mean, let me flip this over here so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. But you can see there's like, you know, there's like a step. They did not grind it perfectly to line it up correctly. So that's kind of one of the other funny things about this is obviously, you know, the the... The little nitpicky crap they really just didn't worry about. They were just like, you know, does it work? Is it going to be consistently good? All right, so looking at the belt clip, the belt clip basically says U.S. patent. Uh, what is this? Let me see if I can't zoomy, zoomy and cheat this thing here. Okay, uh, U.S. patent 4347885, foreign pats pending. So essentially what they had there was, I think they were talking about it was a patent on the belt clip design versus a patent on the knife design. Now, that's one of the other things, too, is also in all the Spyderco knives, it has been a huge, and I do mean absolutely huge, thing for them to say that, you know, we have the patents on the through hole on the blade. You really can't patent a hole in a blade, okay? Come on, man. I'm going to use the Joe Kaka line. You really can't patent a hole through a blade. Now, configuration of the hole, yes, you probably can patent that kind of configuration where you pretty much have, like, you know, basic blade design with a through opening hole for your thumb. 
Now, that stuff that also, you know, Spyderco was very, very aggressive about, and they did sue a lot of other companies that were playing games and, you know, playing fast and loose and, you know, basically, you know, using that technology without asking permission first. All right, so let's see what this thing actually weighs. I need to get the official, uh, you know, sanctioned 80s podcast channel, knife blog, tape measure. All right, so let's just get this thing in. So overall, and see what we got. So from nuts to butts, it is uh, it is roughly eight, almost eight and a half inches. Call it eight and three eighths. Okay, and of course you have to do the conversion on millimeters on that one. Blade length is going to be um, actual sharpened edge is going to be just a touch under three inches. Actual full blade length is three and a half inches, including the choy. Now. The best part about it is when you fold this little booger up, and it, it is a very, very chunky spot. I, I, I can tell you, just on the feel of this thing, it is, it's really like two-thirds the weight, if not close to the weight, of like, you know, a Spyderco comparison to a Swiss Army Swiss champ or champion. This, this guy is like, you know, the nuts to butts, 10 ounces plus... Everything, do everything, Swiss Army Knife, 38 tools or some craziness like that. They're really close in weight. And this is just a single blade knife. This thing is nothing less than completely ridiculously substantial. Uh, okay, you want to know close length? Let's let's just get that official too while we're at it, okay? So close length is going to be uh, about five inches, almost five inches. So it is not an insubstantial knife. It is a very unusual piece to encounter in, well, you know, any form. And I do have one that is absolutely cherry. So I don't mind getting one that has a little bit of foibles of, you know, utilization and banged around a little bit and, you know, seeing a little bit of life's experiences. I'm not going to cry. But considering how rare these things come up on eBay and how rare it is to encounter them, I jumped on this one with both feet. I put it on PayPal, obviously, so I could do the slow, easy payment plan of, ow, this costs too much per month. But I, I could not walk away from this. So literally, I was cruising around, and I, I, you know, I got like so many different source param search parameters I have on eBay. And uh, I put it in there, bam, came up almost immediately. I was like, oh, jeez. Yeah, uh, and it was like, how many people had actually looked at it? You could see the counter for, you know, has been looked at, blah, blah, blah. You know, m multiple people now basically fondling their jimmies going, I'd love to have that, but I'm going to have to think about it. And I, I didn't have to fondle Jimmy for very, very long. Jimmy said, dude, you better jump on it quick or you're going to get jimmied. So, <laughs> uh, I unfortunately, or fortunately, you know, pulled out the wallet. And, and that's the other thing, too, is also when you get collectible items, you cry once when you get stuff that's crap you really don't cry because you know it's crap and you're not really going to have any great amount of just you know any passion for it it's crap okay you just move on and you know you basically bought crap okay you're not going to impress anybody with it to say that i now have two of these knives and i have two of the diver probes i'm a kind of happy dude man my gun my, my oh my gun <laughs> my, my knife collection is looking that much for the better and uh, obviously, these things are very, very scarce. Like I said, they only made a thousand of these. So, truly, there is a thousand of the pre divers. There's a thousand of several series, I think, of the diver probes. And then, of course, there is only a thousand series of the diver probe, you know, in the small iteration. And you know what? If I encounter a small diver probe and I can get into it for not too terribly much money, yeah, I might jump on it. But am I really going to be completely going bonkers to buy something that's about seven eighths or nine tenths of something that I'm ready to have two of? <sighs> Probably not. All right. So anyway, like I said, um, if you do look at the, hopefully the focus will kind of work on this. I'm, I'm cheating, cheating a little bit here. So hopefully it kind of goes, uh, hopefully it kind of works. Mm, you know, this is those times where I really, truly, there we go. There we go. All right. Now, if you were to look at this, there is literally the, the thicker of the two scales and there obviously was a point of where it stepped out and there was the clip now you can see these two little notches right here hopefully i can kind of cheat that a little bit mm. hopefully i can cheat it a little bit 
Okay, these right. Let's see if I can't get this in field of view. Like that little notch and that little notch. And then, of course, there was, you know, the obvious other grinds they did on this. Some of them are better than others. This one actually has a really, really nice grind on it. And to tell you the truth, I think it was actually the left side that, yeah, it, it was the left side. You can see, like, one of these grinds is not quite exactly the same profile as the rest of this profile. It kind of, like, flares a little bit down at this end. <laughs> This was actually where they did have that clip. And the thing about it is, is it wasn't really a well-executed clip. The biggest problem was, of course, it was it was floppy. It was bendy. You know, it, it just didn't work good. It was easy to, like, clip it on something and then bend it and pop it off. And when you're diving and swimming around in water and all that hydrostatic shock and all the rest of that stuff, you're not going to feel when something bends and falls off your belt. You're just going to go, oh, crap, I just lost my seriously expensive dive knife. Uh, on that note, folks, I'm going to think I'm going to break up with this one. Yet another one for the uh, the you know, the dude collection. This one makes me have quite a happy dude. And, of course, you know all the good stuff like that there. Anytime you encounter anything collectible and you really, truly double think about, you know, is the wallet going to really cry? Think about the price of what it's going to be down the road 10 years. And everything that I have in my collection that I currently have that I got for not a bad price has at least tripled in price with current economic times, okay? So this is what you do. You go out, you get yourself something cool, you buy it, you use it, and uh, well, or, or you have it in your collection, and you save it for a time where you're like, crap, I really could use some quick cash. Cha-ching! Put this thing on eBay. It will sell. All right, folks, I'm going to bring up this one. Eager Crypt Thundering, as always, always, you know what you love it, and uh, good stuff like that there, and oh my, I am such a happy, happy person right now that I got mm, yet another one. Good stuff like that there. So, Eager Cape Town Ring is always, always, you know it. Knife blog. Oh, my goodness. Pre-diver goodness. Times two. So now I have two of these guys. Good times. Catch you guys later, and uh, see you guys. Can't get my thumb in a picture. Sort of. Okay, here you go. Earth.